Hello, my name is Mandolin Royal, and today I'm spending some time with my first hybrid baby. <laughs> he or she is coming up on 21 weeks old this Friday, weighing in at 5 pounds, 7 ounces. And there's a confidence to this bird that makes me question gender, but sounds female. <laughs> are you are you feeling mean still? No, you're gonna let me pet you. Are you a boy or a girl? Oh, there's the pecs. There they are. Oh, why are you so rude? Why are you so friendly? I haven't spent that much time with you. At least you're meaty, just in case. So, I want to talk about some of the developments and what this bird feels like, what this bird handles like. And I've got another pile of babies that are coming up on three weeks old. That'll be 12 of these. To give us a better look, because this one is a weirdo. I still think it's a girl. But the nonsense and the biting. What are you? Are you a boy or are you a girl? I feel like it's a girl. No comb, no waddles, thanks to the Shentekler influence with the American breasts. Shallow in the chest. This will need to be addressed. That's not enough chest on a bird, especially a dual purpose bird. The feet aren't blue and they're not yellow. They're kind of like a weird shade. <laughs> Totally winterproof though. And the temperament, I'm going with friendly but questionable. The earlobes are white, that's kind of funny. This is a fun bird. It's very unique for what I have in the barn currently, as far as temperament goes. <laughs> Chatty. I can just walk right into the pen and pick it up, even though I didn't spoil, I didn't overhandle, just the natural way. Now, when I handle the bird, I'm gonna do that from above and show you guys that, but take a look at the head. Do you think that looks like a Cornish head, like an Indian game, purebred kind of Cornish? There's a roundness to the skull and the eye that implies there's some of that in the genetics and I believe according to research that's in the genetics of both breeds at play here but let me go ahead and switch to the overhead view get a feel for the proportions and the fleshing and how fluffy Fluffier than the American breast, that's for sure. This bird's so goofy, though. But I like it. <laughs> Alright, come on, you weirdo chicken. I swear that sounds female. I think I'm partial to the American breast because I can tell gender at four weeks. <laughs> This one's 21 weeks, and I'm still wondering, but leaning towards female. All right, so body length, even though this bird is shaped different and the feathering is different, the principles are the same. So I want to find where the base of the tail is. It's right here. I'm going to set my hand and run it up, and she's got a nice long body. Shoulder width while we're here. 
and that's where one wing ties into the body and where the other wing ties into the body over three fingers it's like three and a half fingers wide there so there's pretty good top width going on well now you're being sweet so the head is nice and wide and that's typical if you have a wide head you're also going to have a wide body now the chanticleer influence does have the cushion comb that is a dominant trait to the single comb it comes with no waddles as well and that's where the extreme weather hardiness comes into play for those colder climates. Now, I'm pretty sure they're not a hen feathered breed. And all of these hackle feathers are rounded. On a male, they'd be pointier. When I switch down to the undercarriage of the bird, it's a little more narrow than what I'm used to with the American breast, but it's a lot better fleshed than what I was expecting. <coughs> Keel feels good, nice and straight. Feathers are thicker. And this bird was born here, not up in Vermont. So we'll see how the feathers adapt to the change in climate, because our winters are nowhere near as bad is what they are up north. The length of the keel, that feels a little short and that could come from either side, but that'll have to go on my list of things to select for to improve the length and the width there. But my whole palm fits in between her legs, so the width down there is good enough, being this wide. Yeah, it's not too bad. You're okay, chicken. What do you think if I spread a wing out? Just let me see. Nice. You're so cooperative for this. Well, let me see this one. Let me see. All right. We'll practice that more. Now, the tail shape and fullness is a lot different than the American breast. It's shorter, it's wider, it's fluffier, and fluff will help produce type and shape on a bird. So this slope here is not the body, it's the feathers creating the slope. But it's not overly cushioned and it's not too fluffy. What do you think? That wasn't too bad for the first handling like that. And now you're being sweeter to me. Yeah, now you're being sweeter. So let me show you my hand. See that? That's from yesterday. That's why I decided I'd, I needed to mess with this bird today. To see if that was a fluke. Because you're goofy. At least there's meat in there, though, in case the temperament sours. <laughs> but that's the little update on the very first one. We'll see what else we come up with and what direction this project takes. I'm going to breed back into American Breasts and see what changes come about then in those subsequent offspring. <laughs> The whole point is to get the good table traits that are my favorite. But with that winterized comb on there. If that chest was deeper, it'd be kind of a sharp looking bird. With the exception that she got her father's toes. So we're going to work on cleaning that up too. Alright, you made a mess. So before you walk in it, let's put you back. So more on this later.